everybody, this is Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And it's a Friday night, <laughs> two days in a row with me, you guys. We're going to be doing the Painted Christmas stamp -a stack card class tonight. For those that signed up, you have a lot of work ahead of you. You're going to be making 16 cards. <laughs> tonight, though, I'm only going to be making four of them because what a stamp -a stack is, is you make four designs and um, four cards of four designs. And so I'm also trying to <laughs> multitask here and <laughs> look for the video at the same time. So, so for those that are doing class, we'll do roll call in a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how to best be most successful, I guess you would say. <laughs> I'll show you the most efficient way, I guess. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got nine people. Hi, Barbara. Woohoo. You guys, I remembered to turn my volume down tonight. So we won't be collecting coins from all night with Mario. So um, Penny Powell's grandkids loved that last night. And that was awesome. <laughs> so, and you guys see in the background over here, I got a little gift from Stampin' Up! today. So, hi, Cindy. Thanks for sharing. Yes, and as you guys are rocking and rolling in here, please share the video with your family and friends. Hi, Janet. Hi, Karen Wetstein. Hi, Cheryl. I have had so many people that tell me that they are so happy that their friend shared the video with them because they they find joy and love and inspiration and creativity. So that's what we're sharing. Hi, Anna Rebidu. Oh, yes. So, you guys, I got a special little gift. Hi, Jeannie. I got a special little gift from Stampin' Up! And I bet you guys want to see it. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. So, I will show you, but I want to see some hearts and likes if those that are watching right now <laughs> want to see what's inside the bag. Hi, Randy from Southwest Michigan. Oh, there's Donna. Very, very good. So, um, there's Brenda. Hello, hello, my sunshine. Uh, so I'll show you guys what's in the bag and then we'll get rocking and rolling with the class. Hey, Sherry Martin. Yep. I see some hearts. That means we got to set things aside. <laughs> I kind of suspected you guys would want to see what's, oh yeah, look at that all come in. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have Patricia settle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Hi, Laura Sullivan. Oh, you guys are so fun. Look at all those hearts still coming in. Hi, Karen. So, you guys, this is the box that this came in, right? So, it's a pretty box. I'm not going to show you, like, the inside because it's just a box on the inside. But on the inside of that bag was a bag. Or, sorry, inside of the box was a bag. So, I got this as a gift for placing in the, the um, top performer category. So, there's a Stampin' Up! logo on both sides and I have to say that I earned these things because of you guys. Your support and love and encouragement and everything that you helped me to, to go, keep my small Stampin' Up! business going has helped me earn this. So you guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your love and support. So are you ready to see? Hi, Arliss. <laughs> are you ready to see what's inside? Okay. So my mom was with me when this came, and so she opened it up with me. And my mom's always there helping me. She's been helping me for the last um, five, four, three days, I should say, Wednesday, she started kidding. So this is what the inside looks like, right? So what I'm going to do is put it on my lap, and then I'm going to start pulling things out so you can see them. Hi, Deirdre! Woohoo! Hi, Janet! So, you guys, this was a scarf, like a, a handkerchief or scarf like that you wear around your neck. It's the Stampin' Up! Um, pretty flowers that they do. Uh, and then it's got the little Stampin' Up! emblem or logo on it. So this was tied around the handles of the bag. And so, yes, you know what? It goes around your neck like this. So I can be all sporting it like, yeah, like that. <laughs> so, okay, so that was one thing. Okay, thanks, Anna. Okay, there's a lot of this stuff in here, okay? So there's these felt pouches. Okay, and we'll open them up. I think that this one has nothing in it, if I had to guess. We opened them all up and we looked. Oh, no, I lied. Oh, my gosh, I lied. These have some glasses in. These are these blue UV glasses. Okay, so um, I, I, it's kind of not good because I need my glasses to see when I'm at the computer. So let's see what they look like, actually, because, yeah. Okay, so they have this 
pearlescent look to them, it, like because when I'm looking through, it kind of looks like prismy. So they're supposed to be for when you work at the computer screen. It's supposed to block the computer wavelengths. <laughs> but I need my glasses when I'm working at the computer because I had a cataract in my left eye when I was 30, and so I have mono vision. So I have a good distance eye and a good close-up eye, right? But together they don't work when I'm like about a foot and a half away from technology. <laughs> so I have to have prescription. So, um, okay, so that was this guy full of glasses. This one is kind of crazy how it like, I feel like back in the day. So this one had some nothing in it. <laughs> You guys felt, saw me do that. I felt like bamboozled there. There was nothing in there. So that wraps around like this. And then there's this little hole here. It's like a little pouch. Now this one had something in it. Hi, Feline. Nice glasses, Barbara says. I love it. This one had some pins in it, you guys. Look at this. I got some pins. I got three pins. One was for uh, overall country top performer. One was for leadership. I placed number 28 in the United States with leadership. And then for team building, I was number 23. And so out of 44,000 demonstrators, you guys, holy Moses and a half, right? Hi, Melanie. Um, you, you order your prescription. Yes. So Melanie, when I order prescription glasses the next time, I will definitely get that blue light filter added to them. So <laughs> it came with this cool little tag. So then this, I don't know, goes something like through here. Okay. So those are these little felt pouchy things. There was a book in here that Sarah Douglas picked out. The dip, um, hi Barb Johnson, the disciplined pursuit of less. Okay, so a book, you guys. When I have time to read, I will read that. And then <laughs> there was there was a little bookmark. I think this is what this is. I think it's a bookmark, and because my mom said it fits on the corner of the page like that. So yep, I think that's what that is. So yeah, so that was in there, you guys. And then there were some socks. Okay, stamping up socks. All right. They are like tube socks, kind of. They go up really, <laughs> really high. So like if I had a crazy sock night party or something, they, I, you know, you could sport them. This looks like petal pink with black. And then this one is more white with petal pink emblem. Again, they're really super long. So they are like knee highs, not knee highs, um, calf highs. <laughs> <laughs> something like that okay so there we got some socks they are really soft I will say that so there's that one and there's more there's more there's this little bag hook so when you go out to the restaurant or need to hang your purse up this hooks on like the edge of the counter and then this hooks onto your bag so that was in there there was a passport oh there's actually a list you guys there's a list right here Let's see what this is. Thanks for sharing, Barb. Thanks for sharing, everybody. It says, felt amenities pouch, felt glasses case, holding a pair of blue light blocking glasses, felt cord organizer to manage electronic device power cords. Oh, this empty one is for you to put all your cords in, I guess. A leather passport cover to be prepared for the time when we can gather again. So that's for your passport. And then two pairs of cozy socks, a floral scarf, a bag holder, and removable felt bag organizer to easily switch items between the bags. Oh, yeah. So Okay, then there's one more thing. I don't know if I read this or not, but this little guy was in there as well. Hi, Terry Costin. I owe you an email back. I did see it. <laughs> I need to reply. Um, here's this. It was all full of stuff. All this manicuring stuff. So I, I love tweezers, so it's, <laughs> you can never have enough tweezers. <laughs> or fingernail clippers, right? Okay, and then what they said about an organizer. So there's this organizer down here that can be removed. It's this whole thing. This whole thing can come out, that whole chunk in the middle. So, okay, so that's super exciting. All these nice little goodies that I got today. <laughs> so I thought I had to share it with you guys. I thought you'd love to see all that stuff. It's fun getting like presents in the mail. <laughs> it's kind of like maybe when you, how you guys feel when you get some of my, purple packages in the mail from me, <laughs> the, oh, my, my, my goodie bags, my card classes. So 
All right, let's get this stuff all put back in here though. So wasn't that fun? See, you guys, I love it. So the thing is that when I get bags from Stampin' Up, I am always so afraid to start using them because I never want to get them dirty. <laughs> Do you guys feel that way when you get something new? Like you don't want to wear it or you don't want to use it because you don't want to get it dirty. <laughs> so, oh yes. Oh yeah. So Terry, I, um, I got your email and yep, whenever you figure out what class you want for your order, that's perfect. And then, um, I'll send you what my, uh, whatever the, the Venmo, I'll send you that so that you know how to send that. So, um, we are learning something with Venmo, you guys, though. Um, we've learned this through three different people I have recently. Um, Venmo has changed their pay fee structure. It used to be that you would just send money and it would not charge a fee if you're sending it to anybody. And now we're learning that you have to pick one of those emoji things like, dinner or drinks or what I don't know what the all the options were but you almost and, and Deb Norman's the one that told me about this and so she's the one that like brought it to my attention a few weeks ago and if you don't pick one of those things it's going to charge me a fee which isn't not good <laughs> you're my friend so um the reason that you guys get the cash discount is because you're doing a fee um a friend option for sending me money electronically. So we've learned that with Venmo. <laughs> so yeah, they change things all the time, it seems. So yes, that is a very nice bag, Brenda, right? Oh my goodness. I am actually wanting to use that one. <laughs> Some of them are bigger than that. And when they're so big, they are in the way, you know, the more, you know, my mom always said the bigger a purse is or the bigger a bag is, the more that you put into it, right? That's how it goes. <laughs> so that was actually a nice manageable size. So yay. Hi, Ann Bellinger. Your card went in the mail today from what you won last night. Yay to you. Um, so what are we working on tonight? Let me just show you real quick. In case you guys missed it at the end of class last night, I did show you our mystery card, which um, was what Kelly and I made. Uh, you guys, there were so many uh, awesome cards that we saw. There were about 47 people who shared their mystery cards. So Kelly sent me the list. And at the end of class, we're going to go through and we're going to do a drawing for the mystery card. We're also going to announce who the winners of the Let's Just Stamp cards are. Um, and Diane still has two more sets of this one left in case anybody wanted a set of those cards. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that's about it. So are you guys excited? Ah, Sandy, you're late, but not too late. We didn't get started really on the class, but... If you want to go back and watch the beginning, I showed off what I got from Stampin' Up! for being a top performer. I got my bag and everything that was in it. So, hi, Carol from Connecticut. Woohoo! So, okay, I feel like we just met last night, so I'm not going to run through all the card classes that are coming up because I think a lot of you know what's going on. And I, I'm almost certain I've been promising you guys a swap card showcase for about three or four weeks. And... I've been sitting at this pile of cards. Every time I sit here, I look at this pile. And so I'm contemplating, hi, Lizzie, right after we're done with the live, I'm going to buckle right back into another live and do a swap card showcase with you guys, because then I can move these cards <laughs> onto um, putting them on display in here. <laughs> so, so don't be surprised if you guys see me a little bit later tonight. So hi, Kathy Jackson. Kathy actually was one that was asking if I... I need to do this showcase of the retro swap and the October customer swap, and I had a team Christmas swap. So yes, we're gonna try to buckle down and get that done right away. Hi, Maggie Cooper. Yes, she just finished her very first kit and she loved it so much and she can't wait to get another one. She messaged me that, so that was so sweet of you, Maggie. I love that you loved the kit. That makes me so happy. Um, I'm going to flip the camera this way, just a hair. I'm going to see if you guys can see. Oh, I don't know if you can see the back side. Oh, you can see my work laptop there, but uh, you can't really see. But like over there, there's a line of boxes that go all the way to there. Um, my mom was a busy bee this week. She kitted up 802 card kits, like so 802 cards. Uh, hi, Rhonda. Hi, Jewel. She worked ahead on December. I think I mentioned this to you guys in the past that the holidays are upon us. And we learned from last year. Hi, Deb Norman. We learned from last year that the kits for December need to get in the mail before the 
Thanksgiving weekend. Otherwise, they can take two to three weeks. And my mom was saying some postal man that she talked to said that, no, maybe it was Tabitha that said it, that the postman, that this was the worst, like it was worse than this year than it is last year. So it is currently now worse already than it was last year. I don't know. But I'm trying to, you know, be ahead of the game. So Anna, Pat, Karen, my mom, me, we all worked really hard to get December's pretty much all ready so that um, we're going to start mailing them next week. So yay. We have way to go, mom. <laughs> you guys, she just left like 10 minutes ago and she says she takes an aspirin before she gets here and she takes an aspirin when she gets back home because of like, there's a lot of standing all day. <laughs> so, um, so Bobby, I think when you say any of these kits left, I'm not exactly sure. I think you mean for tonight's class, but you might need to just, um, tell me which particular class because I do have two kits left for tonight you guys and we're going to start really soon I'm going to give everybody who did this class we're going to do a roll call and then we're going to um, go through what you got in the goodie bag um, I do have two sets left for tonight of the complete package not just the card kits so it would be the $50 porch pickup or $59 mailed option and it includes yes tonight's class okay so yes so watch and make sure that this is what you want because it would include everything I have two sets, so I don't have a Be Happy Stampers team pricing option because I have, um, I had a couple people that had backed out in the past, and so I had their sets, and so that's why I have some extra ones with product because you're not really technically supposed to have product just like sitting around like waiting, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I do have them because of other people backing out, but I, it includes the designer paper, the ribbon, the embellishments, and the envelopes. So why don't we get started and we'll go through what, um, we'll do roll call actually. So let's pull over some of the stuff here and I will list off. So Sandy Wicklander, and as you guys, I call off your name if you want to say here, or that'd be awesome. So Sandy Wicklander, Kelly Bird, Judy Kruger, Leslie McMinn, Linda Hodge, Carmen Melendez, Cindy Runtree, Tabitha Lemkul. I think I'm saying that right, Tabitha. And if I'm not, you guys can always tell me how to say your names correctly if I butcher them. <laughs> Barbara Moynan, Janet Kaur, Laura Sullivan, Melanie Chandler, Laura Sweet, Sue Somerville, and then potentially Bobby, if she's, oh, and then Bobby McPherson. <laughs> Perfect. So then that means I believe I have one left. And if you're local to me and you want to come to class tomorrow, I have it in person tomorrow from 10 to 3. Uh, you can come anytime after 10 and be done by 3. And you'll get the 16 cards hopefully made in time. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to get everybody prepped and ready to get like all their cards made. And I'm only going to go through, because four of them, so there's four different designs, and so you're making four of each one. So I'm not going to make 16 cards with you tonight, but I'm going to show you how to make one of each of them and kind of like guide you to how you could be the most efficient with putting them together. So, okay, so let me flip down and show you what we're going to make. So these are the four cards that we're going to make. So because this is a stamp a stack, um, hi, Loanne Johnson. Hi, Laura Walgen. <laughs> I thought it was Wiegland, but I had to look close. Your L was, or your I was actually an L. <laughs> See, that's my bad eyesight. Um, so with the stamp a stack, uh, this is another class that Carissa and I worked on together. You guys, it was so much fun designing and stamping with a friend. Oh my gosh. I love it. So, um, it was so awesome. And so what we did with this, because we knew that, oh man, you guys had 24 people planned to sign up, right? And 16 each. So whatever 24 times 16 is the number of cards that were kitted up for this class. And so they are pretty with layers, but not necessarily lots of intricate die cutting or lots of embossing, but still super pretty cards, right? And that's always awesome too. Not everything has to be crazy. We learned that like with our let's just stamp class, like you can make super pretty cards with lots of layers and a little stamping, embellishments and ribbon, but not all this crazy um, die cutting stuff. So Weigand is the way. Weigand. I, okay, perfect. So you're the W A I. It is an I. Oh my God. No, yeah, it is an I. <laughs> okay, you guys have the eyesight. Why again? Okay, I got it, Laura. Perfect. Okay, 
So this is Gail's kit. Gail's actually coming tomorrow with her daughter, Crystal. And Gail never minds if I cut up and do um, work ahead for her at all. <laughs> she loves it and appreciates it. So for the $50, for people who signed up for the in-person, the $9 was for the mailing. Hi, Margaret. The is $50 for porch pickup or $59 mailed. And so you get a pack of the painted, I think it's called painted Christmas, painted Christmas 12 by 12 paper. You get a pack of the Stampin' Up! Basic white medium envelopes uh, to go with all your cards. You'll get a pack of the red rhinestones and you get a whole roll of the ribbon. So that in and of itself is about $35 with the product with shipping and tax incorporated. Then you get the card kits and I'll, oh, I got to grab some. Hang on. I'll show you what you get. I thought about grabbing them before we started and then I completely forgot. So in person, I gave everybody little Ziploc baggies. Uh, for those that are doing the class with me online, you got like more cellophane bags, but you got a pack. For those that got yours mailed, um, you got four different packs. There's four for each card. And in there, you have your four bases, your four mats for the inside, your four um, outside mats, and then whatever stuff goes with it. So you're going to kind of want to work on each one at the same, you know, like this packet at one time and then go to this one. Don't be pulling out all your pieces all at the same time, like work one packet at a time. So all of this then, you were asking Margaret, the whole class was $50 for porch pickup, 59 mailed. So, so what I'm going to do with you tonight though, is I have the four my four kits of each of the card designs and I'm gonna walk you through how to make them. But this is a different kind of class for you guys because when you get card kits from me, generally it's an envelope and it includes, you can use any Christmas stamp set, absolutely, because look at these cards. You need a sentiment, a sentiment, a sentiment, and a sentiment. And if you don't have the particular ones that I'm doing tonight, you can interchange them with anything. The only other thing too is on the inside, I have some foliage and more sentiments, right? So, but yeah, you don't have to buy a specific stamp set. When we, Chris and I designed this, we tried to make it very universal. So if people don't have the stamps, then they can use whatever sentiments they have. So generally when you guys get a card kit, I mean, if you watch my classes, you see what I pull out, you get like the cut paper, everything's embossed, die cut. And that's kind of what this is as well. The difference is because you're getting the pack of designer paper in your kit, I did not open up everybody's designer series paper and cut it and then put it back in your packet. Nope, <laughs> that was gonna be way too much. <laughs> that, <laughs> not gonna work. Um, yes, Margaret, you can order my last one, absolutely. I do have a notepad here too, so I can jot that down. And then Margaret, we can touch base after class. If you wanna pay on my website, you have the ability to pay on my website. Um, or if you want one of those cash options, you guys, I do the cash options as for you guys to save the money um, versus paying with a credit card on my website. So um, we can make that work. So yes, they're all gone. If you guys are watching this, I don't have any left, okay? So, but back to the designer paper. We are going to work through this together as a group to show you this because, you know, it's nice having the designer paper cut for you, right? So that you know that's gonna what you wanna use. But what's super cool about this is you could potentially pick, like, let's say you really love this pattern right here, and you'd rather have that pattern on this card and maybe this pattern on that card. You're very welcome, Margaret. You have the ability to change these cards to make them how you want them, right? So, and that's because you have a whole pack of designer paper to work with. So, um, we're going to open the taper and we're gonna pull out the sheets that we need. And as a group, I'm gonna teach you guys like, and show you, you know how to cut paper. So I'm not teaching you how to cut paper. I'm gonna teach you like what we need for this class in particular for paper. So I know that we definitely need this sheet right here. And so we're gonna pull out this from the kit right away, okay? And then I know we need this one, okay? So pull out this one. That one is for on this card and it's um, a little banner right there. So those are two of them. All right, then we need this one that's on this card. And then this one, 
is on that card as well. And then this one. Okay, so those are the four different patterns that we're gonna need. Now, it is such pretty paper, I love it. So um, the great thing about this, you guys, is you have all this extra paper, right, to make more with. Love it, chop it. Don't be afraid to cut this paper up. They make more pretty paper every day. And you can still buy this if you love it that much. You can always get more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with cutting the designer paper because if you looked in the kit, back to this one. So this one, this kit is this one. Um, you made an advent calendar with it. That's awesome, Lizzie. Uh, this kit does not contain the designer paper because it's in your kit. So you're gonna need to cut four pieces, okay? And everybody who um, paid to get this class for me, either as a Be Happy Stamper or a customer who bought it, you guys got a PDF tutorial. Um, for those that are with me tonight wanting just to make cards with me, the designer paper is three by three and 13 16 Okay, and that's this one. So let's grab that sheet. And remember, we need to cut four of them, okay? So if you remember, 12 divided by four is three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my paper at three and 13 16 because then I can cut it at three inches and I'm only just cutting off, a lo I'm lobbing off this side right here. So three, now if you guys aren't a 16th kind of person, you could go with a three and three quarter, that's no problem, but I'm a 16th kind of person. So I, I'm gonna cut it at three, get you out of there, three and 13 16 okay? So we don't need this sheet for anything else. I'm gonna put it off to the side. And now we can work down. Um, so we need three inches, three inches, three inches, <laughs> getting the drift, and three, okay? So you've got your, now that is your mat that goes right here. There's no top or bottom with it. Like the leaves are all going in circles. So don't worry about that, okay? So now because I've got Gail's here for her, I'm actually gonna set hers right inside here so she's golden on that one, okay? So let's look at the next one then. Hi, Julie Bierschbach, we will see you tomorrow. Did you get your homework done, my girlfriend? Okay, so this one we're gonna do next. So for those working with me at home, it's five and one six by three and 13 sixteenths. So, I am going to cut, and there's no top or bottom really to this one either. So I like to cut the five and one sixteenth first. And I'll need more, so we gotta set that off. And then three and 13 sixteenths. So three and 13 sixteenths. So if you might think that the pattern should have gone that way, it maybe could, but it also go, you cover up a lot of it. So. If you feel that there's a particular pattern to this one, then make sure you get it going the right way. But it's so all over the place too. So now there's a little strip left here. So don't throw that away. You might want that. Your paper is cut and ready to go. Awesome. Um, very, very cool. Um, then one more is what we need over here. So we're gonna do, this time I'm gonna do a three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. So now I've got, I got my four here. So that gives me the four pieces that I need for this kit, but I'm not done because there is a little banner here. And that banner is one and a quarter by two and a quarter. And it is this piece right here. So one and a quarter by two and a quarter. So. I think what I'm gonna do is cut it at one and a quarter, making sure that I'm lined up nice and straight. There it is. So one and a quarter and two and a quarter. So I like to multiply out. So one and a quarter by two and a quarter, two and a quarter and two and a quarter is four and a half. So I like to go four and a half and then two and a quarter. I'm, I'm touching the paper less by doing that. So there's two. And now remember two and a quarter and two and a quarter is four and a half. So I'm gonna cut it there and bring it back to two and a quarter. So that by 
doing that, it eliminates me picking up the paper an extra time. So I've got these four little pieces set off to the side um, there for this card. Now, the one thing that's on here is that it's bannered. So for you guys that got this kit, when you got your kit here, you already got, this one's already embossed with the evergreen. We did that last night's class, the evergreen one. It's already, I bannered everything for you. And then the red is already bannered. But what's not bannered are these pieces. So you have a couple options. You can use a scissors. And the trick is to cut. I want that guy. It feels like it goes that way. So you start in the middle. And then you go from one corner to the other corner. And that can banner it for you. Hi, Nanette. All right, so that's one way. <laughs> but... I'll be honest with you, I did not do that for all of your pieces. Um, I actually pulled out a retired punch that is a uh, oldie but a goodie. It, it was called the Banner Triple Punch. And you guys, I'm showing it to you, but I'm advertising that I did not, it's not for sale. They retired it, um, but I'll tell you, if you want to banner stuff, this is actually what I used for your kit. So um, the triple banner punch. And I know a lot of you have that, so that's why I wanted to remind you that if you have that, you should pull that out to do your bannering. They have a new punch that is called um, a pick a banner punch, but it only goes up to an inch. That one goes up to two inches. So that's why I use that one because it was a one and a half inch piece. So, so you guys, that's it. Four pieces of this background mat and then four banners. And Gail can banner the rest of hers tomorrow. <laughs> I gotta leave something for her to do, right? Okay, so that's this one right here. Okay, so that one's now prepared and ready to go. We'll do this one next. So it uses this pattern. Oh, I don't know if I pulled that pattern out. Hmm, which one is that? Forgot about it. It's on the back side of, what's on the back side? That one, ha, ha, ha. Okay, we did pull it out. <laughs> All good. So um, now this one is this one. That was easy way was easier way to cut the banner than I usually need. Yes, okay, yes, absolutely, you guys. The trick for the banner cutting, however deep you want your banner, cut it from the middle up that far, and then just go from corner to corner, and perfect, easy bannering. Yep, better believe it. All right, this designer paper here. How do we get kits? Laura, they're all gone now. <laughs> I Margaret got my last one. I've been holding out. I had two that were um, that were still available, and now they're gone. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be posting the PDF tutorial on my website. Um, I'll try to do it tonight yet, if I can. But you can always get the PDF tutorial, which has pictures, measurements, and instructions. So this designer paper is 5 and 1 16 by 2. So that's this piece right here. So 5 and 1 16 by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, you guys, this is me thinking... I'm gonna cut it at four because four divided by two is two. So I'm gonna get one here, one here, one here, and one here. So we're gonna do four, which lobs off this piece, which we'll save for later. Now I'm gonna do five and one sixteenth. Five and one sixteenth. This is extra, leave it for a scrap. But now all we gotta do is come back and divide these in half and make it two and two inches. And then this one will be two and two inches as well. Oh yeah, you bet, Laura. I will try to do it. Last night, you guys, I was on my A game. I got the PDF. If you guys missed last night and didn't get these cards, I've got the PDF tutorial posted for these last night. So if anybody wants just to get the tutorial, it's out there already. So this is what we need for this piece right here. Then there's another one, this guy right here. That is three and 13 16 by one and a half. Okay, so what do we have left here? That's not, oh, that might work. Okay, so here's one piece. I'm pretty sure that was our three and 13 16 by now one and a half, okay? So we can salvage this little guy, yay. So there's one, and then we need three more. So I like to like, I like to like, I like to look and see how it might be best to, to use it without cutting so much off. And we are using 
a little chunk here as well. So I feel like chicken tonight. So let's do, let's cut it this way. I like to leave my designer paper in as big a section as, as possible. So now one and a half, right? So one and a half and one and a half is three and three and one and a half is four and a half. So you guys, then I work backwards. I start at four and a half. Now this is extra. And then I go down to three. This is how I really cut paper, you guys. <laughs> Very strategic about it. Okay, so then I got two. And now I'm down to three inches. And when I cut this in half, it gives me that. And I didn't have to pick up and open this thing and finagle my paper all over the place. That's why I do that. Okay, so now we have our four pieces and our four pieces with some scrap left over. But that's the designer paper we need for this guy, which is not this one, but it is this one. So Gail's all set for that one now. Lucky Gail, isn't she? <laughs> all right. Now, lastly, we have this one. So Carissa presented this card to me as an idea of doing the scraps. And it's like, Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I would have ever done this for a card cla class card for like one there. I had to cut all your paper because I would have wanted to like, oh, like be done at the end of the day with having to cut these strips. But I thought, well, this will be a good learning experience for you guys if you cut your own paper, <laughs> right? Okay, so you guys are all cutting your own and that's why I'm like, yep, let's do it. So this guy right here. So these are all different widths. This one's a one incher, but you got to make sure that you have at least about like four and a half. And this piece right here should, it should make it work. So let's look at this. All right, Barb, I'm so glad that you're here with us. And thanks to Cindy for sharing you with us. <laughs> so I think we need to cut this at, like you could use this if you wanted to, like you don't have to, but you could. So we're gonna cut one. So this is one of those. And then we're down to, remember we're always doing fours because this is a stamp -a stack So one, two, three, but there's one left that we need and we're gonna cut off an inch here. Let's see what I like to do. We're gonna go down to here first and then bring this to an inch, okay. So scrap, scrap, all this is scrap. We don't need these. Use them for a different project. But we have our one inch pieces here. Okay, so that guy goes here. This green one is, I believe, three quarters of an inch. Yep, three quarters of an inch. And you wanna have it by at least six so that you don't um, cut yourself or sell yourself short. So three quarters of an inch is doubled as one and a half. So we're gonna go one and a half. Okay, then this is extra. We don't need this, cut that off to the side. And so now you gotta do, we'll cut this at six. And now we cut each of these at three quarters. So you're just getting yourself some skinny strips here. Hi, Hillary from Missouri. So this one is for here and here. And then another one here. Now I know they're a little long, but you don't wanna risk being too short and then having to cut yourself another piece. All right, so you got these four, all right? Now there's a half incher on the side with this guy. So we're gonna do one inch by six, right, for now. And then what's on the other side? Oh, we need that too. Okay, so we'll set this over here. But the reason I did one inch is because now I'm gonna cut it at six and then I'll divide it in half. So there is a half inch and I gently set this down and I kind of press while I cut so that it doesn't wiggle on me, wiggle, wiggle with it. Okay, so there's those two and now we have another half inch here. Holds it down so it doesn't wiggle, wiggle. And there's those. Okay, so there's two more yet. There's that guy. So he's a half inch and I saved this. This was a scrap. I bet we could work with this. It's a half inch. So let's cut 
at one, and I'm trying to keep the side that has the pretty pine cones on it and cut off the part that doesn't. And then I'm gonna throw that away, you guys. That's a scrap I can deal without, <laughs> okay? Um, you quite, like, how big of a scrap should you keep? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm gonna see how wide this is. That is three inches. So we're gonna cut this in half first at half inch, hold it, and then twist it. And we're gonna do one and a half here. And let's hope that that cuts at the same time and it did. So now we have these four pieces, perfect for this little side right here. And then the red strips are in your kits. Okay, so these little red strips I provided and your ribbon goes over the top. And there's one left, this guy right here. He's on the back side of the one we just cut. And it is actually, you guys, three eighths of an inch. Wiggle, wiggle with it, Stacey Warner. <laughs> now you know what you're gonna be up against tomorrow, right? You, Cause you should bring your, your um, paper trimmer, Stacy. I hope you got the email about your paper trimmer. Okay, so three eighths of an inch. All right, I do have a paper trimmer here too, or two or three if you need to borrow one. All right, so three eighths of an inch is here. And I'm going to cut that first. And then we're gonna go now. So look at this, you guys. I know this is really blurry and dizzy-like, but this is a half of one of these, whatever they are, it's diagonals. So you're gonna get this kind of line right through the middle. So I'm actually gonna flip it around and go from this side and get that more full one over here and cut it there so that I don't have a somewhat half one, see that? That, that gives you like the, the whole thing. All right, and I'm gonna make sure that I have enough. So I'm gonna make it at six inches. So there's one, two, and where'd my other one go? Right there, how oh, it blended in. Okay, <clears throat> and actually I'm gonna try to trim off. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I am gonna try to trim off a little of that so that I don't have that white line. Oh, it worked, yay. So I cut that off. I wouldn't save that, guys. I actually, that went in the garbage. And then there it is. Okay. So, <laughs> that's how you need to cut the designer paper. And I know a bunch of you that are doing this class with me at home. I don't ever want you to feel overwhelmed and not make your cards <laughs> because you don't know how to cut the paper, <laughs> right? So, part of it is teaching what is the saying? Teach a man to fish and he'll fish forever. So, I'm going to teach you guys how to cut paper. And you'll know how to make cards then because you can cut your own paper. And I just wanted to make sure you're successful with that because normally I do a lot of hand holding and I cut all the paper for you guys, <laughs> like all of it. <laughs> so, okay. So now that you guys have the designer paper cut, and the main thing you guys was to cut four of everything, right? Because you're making 16 cards. So once you have that designer series paper all cut, then what I might do, like I just did here, you can see, I'm flipping down. I put it back in the kit so that now that's done. And now you could go and start working on each of the kits, okay? Now, there's four things on each kit though. So I would highly encourage you that if you're gonna do one card, do the same four things on each card. Like do more of like a little factory process like line, right? So. We're gonna start with this, we're gonna end with that one. <laughs> that one's definitely gonna be last. So let's do this one. This one's an easy one. Okay, so you guys will have, remember this, four of everything though, okay? So the card that we're gonna start with is this one. And it has a little white inside, not little, normal white inside. So you'll have four of these real red mats that are four and a what are they, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So if I were you, I'd take and burnish all of your edges, take all four bases, burnish them. And then you can either, I would, I always like getting stamping done, but you can also get gluing. Um, you will notice that, um, I don't know if I cut, <laughs> you can see that I like to um, utilize paper. I don't know if that happened to yours or not, but <laughs> I don't remember. I don't think so. I think Pat cut all those labels out separately. You guys, this is embossed with the winter green forest or evergreen forest embossing folder. So it's got the trees on it. So that'll go here. That'll go here. 
this will go here, but let's do some stamping first. Let's get the stamping done. So for those that are doing this, I would do stamp, 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 and then four stamps and then stamp. So get, get everything done. Like it doesn't make sense to ink up everything and then clean it and then do it again. Okay. So with the stamps that we're using for this one right here, um, the foliage on the inside comes from this set and then all of the words come from this one. And so there are four nice big selections for the sentiments that we kept as the focal for the outside. And then we alternated between Merry Christmas and Season's Greetings on the inside. But we mentioned, if you don't have these stamps, sentiments is all you need that fill in those spaces. So I'm going to do, well, the front, oh, they're not in here, haha. -ha. <laughs> they're all here from last night's class yet. They're all on blocks. They were never even left the desk here. So we have this one. We will do this one. Friends like you make this season special. So you're going to ink up. And remember, it's always a good idea to practice to see how it stamps. Uh, when it comes to your die cut pieces from me, you guys, the soft rolled edge is the top. And then the rougher edge on the back here is the bottom that gets cut into the bottom plate. If you mess up, it doesn't matter. You can flip it over. Just know that you're going to have a more rough edge up. I do tell people that it's okay to stamp on the back first just to practice and then flip it over. You don't generally see the red through it. So I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go right to town here. It's like my mom says, oh, let's go to town. And it's like we're in town. I'm like, mom, we're already in town. All right. So get that guy stamped. Very nice. Okay. And then the season's greetings. We'll do that because... This one mentions season, and so that will go nicely with the season's greetings here, whereas the other sentiment references Christmas, and so we'll put Merry Christmas in that. So season's greetings along the top. Oh, man, I'm afraid that's going to fall over. Then on the bottom, we've got... So the only two ink colors that were used in this whole class are real red and evening evergreen. So this one has... The, some of the dyes from the foliage set. So there's this ferny thing. <laughs> yep, it's a ferny thing. And pine bough-ish thing, mistletoe-y. Um, put that in the bottom corner like that. And then there are these berries. And if you guys watched yesterday, we talked about that there are four of them. But you don't need to use all four. I actually like the three. And so ink up the three. But then as you're stamping, be careful. If you did get some ink on that bottom one, just make sure that one's off the edge of the page and you won't worry about it stamping. Three is a nice odd number. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's what we've got for stamping. So we'll get these guys. I always like to shut the ink pads while I'm not using them just to keep them so they don't dry out. All right. So let's assemble things. Okay. If you look at this label, you can see that the red back here is not, like, how you're like, how do you do that? So we're going to take your scissors and cut it diagonally from this nook here to the other nook or crook or corner. <laughs> okay, so that's ready for us like that. Okay, so let's get a little glue. I like to, for this one, assemble from the top down. So we, so first I'm going to, we're going to glue each of these together. Now, I just realized that that thing is there. So normally I would put glue on this and then when I go to set it down, I'm going to get glue all over my desk. So I'm going to put glue actually on this piece, guys. So don't let that confuse you. Generally, I would put it on there, but yeah, I don't need a mess all over my desk. And then we'll put a little glue there. So now this one is going to go over the top of that and get it nicely positioned there. And then this one, thank you, Arlene. <laughs> I try to be as clear and concise as possible for you guys, right? Because that means that you guys will be successful. So then this one's going to go on here. And, you know, hopefully it meets like end to end, like, and doesn't hang over. If it does, you guys will just take your scissors and trim off a little. So we're going to check this one really quick too, before we get glue on it and make sure um, if by chance I cut them off a hair, all you guys have to do is take your scissors 
and just trim that little hair off right like that and that's okay then it's not going to be hanging over so now that we've got that figured out now we can put glue on both of these and then we're going to adhere them to that white tree embossed piece so we're going to do this one first now when i look at this you guys there's different um tones to the paper you see it's darker here lighter here darker so you might want to be strategic about how you place it if you like that darker section at the top put that at the top or if you like that one at the top put that one at the top it's however you cut your paper it might all be a little bit lighter and it's about a half a good half inch over so you see the white over there this is a super cool layout you guys if you do swapping <laughs> with other demonstrators or other friends or anybody that you do swapping with this is a cool layout because it really showcases two different designer papers and if you don't like these two papers together that's what's awesome about this getting the whole pack of designer paper you guys could have swapped them out and looked at all the paper and figured out oh i really like the other paper with this instead okay so this guy gets glued right about there and now that oh genie you didn't have to send me that dollar we it was okay <laughs> so oh man you guys okay so i appreciate it though genie thank you okay so that's on there now flip this over and we're going to adhere this because it's an embossed piece i am going to put a little more glue there and then we're also going to put adhesive on the back of that and then this one, you guys check your cards. Do you notice that I always open them? <laughs> I, well, I shouldn't say always. I do make my fair share of trick cards, but if you open the card base before you get glue happy, then you can double check to make sure you have your orientation right. Okay, so then open this up. Oh, you wanna see if you did it right? Well, I'll check. All I saw was that you sent the dollar. I'll check if the fee was taken out. So did you pick dinner or drinks? or something else that was fun and cool. <laughs> so, okay, so now we have this here. And what I will do, so I'm gonna put a little adhesive here and here. I didn't wanna go too close to the edge because I do have a little bit of red hanging out here. So that's gonna have about, what, an eighth of an inch maybe on the left and the top. Okay, and then on the bottom here, We've got the same thing, kind of has got about an eighth of an inch on the right side now, okay? So that's what you do for labels if you want, if they don't make a matching, you had a beer with me, I love it. <laughs> oh, I, I bet it tasted really good. <laughs> oh, good, good. Okay, so that's what you do for your labels, guys. If, if it's the same size, you cut it in half, diagonally, in the middle, or which way, and then you just split your labels, and then that's awesome. Okay, you guys, we're getting to the end of our tear and tape time here, but grab a piece of tear and tape, and the corners that have the ribbon coming out, that's what you're gonna prep first. Okay, get that tear and tape on there, and you're going to get two of them set up and hanging out here ready for you oh man here it is you guys I officially finished the roll of tear and tape and it went right to the garbage <laughs> okay so <laughs> time for a new one okay so stampin up changed their tear and tape so it's got a different tone to it it's a little different so but we're gonna rip but it still is rippable so we're setting these off to the side and we are going to now we're ribbon okay so what i do so i'm not cutting ribbon right i'm just going to actually look at that it's cut on a nice diagonal already so that's going to be usable so you're going to have your little tail come out this way and then you're going to just catch that tear and tape back there and make a little bunny ear right so you've got i don't know if you can see it's always better with white paper hang on so you can see that's what that looks like. And now that's where this tear and tape comes in handy. You've got it already ripped and ready. And that's going to go right on there. Now you're going to cross the back and go to the opposite side with your bunny ear. Like, like it's going to catch the tear and tape. Bring your bunny ear back. And then you're just going to bring it and have the tail come out that side. Take your other piece of tear and tape. 
and that's gonna hold that down. Okay, so you've only really, like, I, I would say wasted this amount of ribbon. You could have cut two pieces and not wasted that, but it like just eliminates using excess ribbon. And then look, look at that. You're just gonna cut it, and now you've used all of the ribbon. You didn't throw any in the garbage from trimming your ends or anything. So, but you guys remember, you're doing four of these, okay? So you're gonna do that, all of this in stages of four. Okay, I would take dimensionals, see where they are, getting to the end of this one. So we might get to throw this sheet away too. You guys, never throw away these edges. You can cut them apart and they work perfectly great. Oh, Maggie learned so many tricks from yesterday's kids. That's great, you guys. That's exactly what I love to te you, teach you guys tips and tricks so that it makes your stamping more successful and that you enjoy it, right? <laughs> it's not frustrating. Okay, this bit right here kind of sits right in the middle of that designer paper is what I've got going on here. And it's kind of peeking out here and Something like that, I think, will be very nice. Okay, then last but certainly not least, we've got some red gems. And I actually think those were clear and I colored them red, so we won't use those. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, everybody. I'm seeing comments come through that you're sharing. I appreciate it. You guys, you have a whole thing of gems. <laughs> Go crazy, use as many as you want. Oh, Jewel found me on PayPal. How much do you owe? Um, I think 41 for game night and 24. Um, tw you want to paint at Christmas. So Jewel, if you want to send 61 via PayPal, friends and family, that would be awesome. Okay, so you guys, you've got three on here. That's what I did. Um, you would think that embellishments aren't the hardest thing for me, but they can be because I feel like Sometimes they fit perfectly, and sometimes they you're like, where should I put them? And it's like, I feel like I want to put another. Oh, look at that. Like on the eye of friends. Look at that. I just put one on the, the little eye of friends, but now I feel like I need one more. So we're going to put one. But like, if you don't want it to look too uniform, right? <laughs> so, oh, I don't know. We'll put three up here. There. It's your card, you guys. Remember, you can make it however you like it. <laughs> and you, I might not ever see it unless you share it in the class card challenge. <laughs> All right. So there, we got one done. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. That wasn't so crazy. Marilyn loves it. That's awesome. Yay. So you guys, just think about this, though. This is a Christmas card. But think of the idea of this layout. How simple this layout is for if you have two designer papers of any kind of theme that just, they make a little cross like that and putting a label here with some ribbon and embellishments, super simple. So I love it. Okay, one done, hi Philly. <laughs> I love sharing with you guys, <laughs> perfect. Oh, Jewel's already done, look at that. See, I hope it wasn't too hard. Hi Chris from Iowa. All right, one down, three to go. What's next? Let's look at this. Okay, we're saving the scrappy one for last. Okay, so we're going to do this one next. Okay, for you guys that got your kits from me um, at home, you got yours. I put them in cellophane bags like this that are tall like that. So they look a little bit different than normal. Okay, so next we have the banner one. All right, that's this guy. Oh, I love this one so much because the bow. <laughs> the bow is the bomb dizzle here. Okay, so... Maria loves it. Yay. Okay. All right. So evening evergreen is the base. Traditional. Eight and a half by five and a half. Fold it. Score it. Oh, you guys actually had to fold your cards in half this time. <laughs> okay. There's the base. It's all about the base. So now we have some mats. You'll have your red, real red and your white that are four by five and a quarter. Hi, Mary Ellen from Montana. Um, Perfect, Jewel, I appreciate it. Then you have already cut your designer paper five and one six by three and 13 sixteenths, okay? Then you should have a label 
a white label, four white labels to be exact. You guys, when I'm saying one, you mean I mean you really have four for those that got the class with me. And you have three, uh, four of the green ones. You have a banner here. I don't know about, let's see if I have it measured. Red is three and three eighths by one and a quarter. The evergreen is three by one. And the designer paper was one and a quarter by two and a quarter. And all of these are banner punched. And then for you guys that got the kits for me, that's the wintry embossing folder with the foliage bows. <laughs> okay, so this one we did, they have a holly jolly Christmas right here. So let's bring that in. What's our inside look like? Just to see here, Merry Christmas and oh, I did that guy. So we're gonna do those little guys in the bottom. And outside is evening evergreen. So let's grab that sentiment here and here and Merry Christmas. Okay, so I think we just used Merry. No, we didn't. It's right here. Perfect. <laughs> we just used Season's Greetings. Okay, so at Evening Evergreen Ink. Again, these are the red rubber, so I don't put a foam mat underneath because they have a lot of foam there already. But let's grab our piece of paper here and just practice to see how it stamps. Ooh, you guys, this one got a lot of love recently too. So we're gonna, I don't know, we didn't re-ink this one last night, but I'm gonna show you how to re-ink it. Let's see if I can find my re-inker really quick. Um, I found it, it wasn't really quick, but I found it fast enough, I think. So. The middle, <clears throat> I'm looking at it. So you'll know that your inks need to be re-stamped if they don't stamp consistent. And it's hard to see it in a video, but this is dark, it goes light, and then it gets dark again. And that's because a lot of the ink was taken right out of the middle. When people go to stamp, it's instinct to go right to the middle of the ink pad. So to re-ink it, we did this last night too on the brown one, I think. So you just run some ink all over it. But the main thing is you have to grab a spoon and you gotta spoon it. So you're just gonna rub that ink back and forth so that you don't have lines when you put the stamp into it that you didn't get the line. So this bl blends the ink really nicely. <clears throat> okay, you gotta be careful, you gotta clean that off. I'd use a baby wipe, you could run it underneath the tap water, but we did that to the green spoon. Maybe it was soft suede, but the green spoon. We did it to the brown spoon yesterday, okay. <clears throat> yes, I put that back in there and I'll use it for the next time. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> now let's see what happens when we stamp this. It should be a lot crisper and more solid. So, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but maybe you can. You see how dark and consistent it is now where that middle area was a lot lighter. That's why it's nice to have inked up stamps. And you can see here, I have a halo going on all the way around that ink. That doesn't matter. <clears throat> as long as you don't stamp too um, heavy here and you don't rock your stamp, you should never have to worry about that ink on the edge. So you go straight down, give it a second, straight up. And you saw I had all the ink around the edge, but I didn't get any ink on here. So I do see a lot of the times that people are always trying to wipe that ink off before they go to stamp. <laughs> it's just taking extra time. It's all about just learning how you, know, you practice on your paper. And then you, once you figure out how it needs to stamp, <clears throat> just not pushing too hard and not rocking your stamp. So that you guys got to re-ink with me. Okay, I think we're good on that. I'll put that there for now. And we need to do, we wish you a Merry Christmas in the inside there and then it's this guy so this is the single pine thing and how I did it is a full strength and then right away a second strength and then I'm doing a second strength oh man so this is where I would have pulled out my <laughs> this because it does stamp better there's no foam on these so then we'll do a second string. So I'm just filling in the corner. Now, if you don't like that, you don't have to do that. You could use your leaf. You could use this guy and put some berries. Honestly, you guys, the berries would have looked super cool there too. So, but now that I did this, I'm gonna leave it because I don't wanna redo it. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so 
What do we have left? I think we can get some of stuff glued together. So you notice here that there's some ribbon here, okay? And that's tucked behind the red. So we gotta make sure we do that before we glue that mat down. So, but we can get glue happy with these two things. So, hi, Angela. Thanks for loving and sharing. <laughs> You're a working girl, girl. You gotta bring home that money so you can buy some stamps. Oh, by the way, Angela, your, your ink pads came in today. I meant to text you and tell you that. So they are all hanging under the bag in the mudroom for you. So you can grab them whenever you want. Judy Kruger, if you're watching, your dies came in. Your word wishes dies came in. They are hanging underneath the counter in the mudroom with your card kits, actually. Your painted Christmas and your no November monthly kits. So Judy, if you're watching, I will also message you though, Judy. Okay, then what else can we do? So... Let's do our banners next. I actually love to raise up the bottoms of my banners here. So I glue the top flat and I bring out the bottom so it kind of curves up. I do. <laughs> I've done that for a long time. I call them fluttering in the wind, <laughs> my, my tails. So I'm gonna put at the bottom of each of them a dimensional. And then what I do is I glue the top. So we're gonna put a little glue here, here, and here. And the first one to go down is the red one. Let's move these over and get you in the center here. So we're about <laughs> a quarter inch away and I have them flush with the designer series paper here. So get that glue one down, make sure you're straight, <clears throat> and then that gets adhered here. So <clears throat> this one is actually next, right? So you kind of have to figure out where it goes in relation to where this one's gonna go. So if he's gonna go here, this one needs to go right about there is how I would say to do that. And it could be a little bit closer or further away. Um, so now I'm like, oh shoot, I should have moved that over a hair, right? So now I'll just pick it up really quick and move it over a hair <clears throat> and then you should be good to go. So you have a little wiggle room with that glue. And as long as you don't put the dimensional down, squish it, you should be able to pick it up. I wanted a little more red to show than the green, just so it wasn't, just, not, not synonym, but symmetrical. Okay, so we got our flutterings in the wind. Now our ribbon is next. So remember, you guys are doing four of these though. So cut your ribbon, cut all four pieces of your ribbon. That'd be good. Let's get the ribbon scissors though right here. So I always cut about a half an inch longer than I need. So that's enough to tuck my tails behind. So this is where my tear and tape will come in handy. I like to do my tear and tape sandwich. So put your two pieces down first, like this. By doing this, it gives something for my ribbon to catch and I can look at it straight from the front. I see a lot of times people do this and then put their tails. Ah, ah, I can't see the front of it to make sure it's straight when I do that. So I like to get the tape back there in the right spot where the, the ribbon's gonna catch. And you're gonna be about a half an inch down. You eyeball it from the front. You know, make sure you're not crooked like that. Get it as straight as you can and want it to be. <laughs> and then all you have to do is flip the ends over. They'll catch the tape. Perfect. Then when it, where the sandwich comes in is that you put another piece of tear and tape over the top. And then that's perfect. It squishes it between, so you're getting adhesive on both sides of the ribbon, so it's not gonna come out. All right, adhesive now on the rest of this, because you've already got adhesive where the tear and tape is, you don't need more. That's gonna go onto your card front. <laughs> Make sure you got it right. And then you've got about an eighth of an inch margin all the way around. Now, because you've got tear and tape, it's not gonna wanna wiggle as much, but you'll be able to pull it up if it's off. Okay, then this label, you've got the green. Now, you could do the same thing like we did on the last one. You could definitely cut it in half and put top bottom. You could cut it diagonally and put some up on the top and some on the bottom. But what we did on ours, when Chris and I made this, we put it on the bottom. So what I would say, I stamped it on both sides. I don't remember doing that other side, but ah, who knows? So we're just gonna put a little glue here. 
that's definitely the better side. And then I want about that eighth inch margin on the bottom. That keeps it consistent with the rest of the card. And something like that. No, we did this flat. You could definitely pop it up if you wanted to, but we went with the flat option because I liked how the banners were kind of popping out more. And then this is down here. Okay, we're almost time for the bozy. Okay, so hi Penny Powell, stopping on to say hi Penny. I remember to take my volume off so the kids don't, can't listen to the coins come in all night, <laughs> but, but you're just popping in anyways. All right, so you guys, I've got a double bow. You see the bunny ears are so nice. They're so awesome, I love them. Okay, this ribbon makes great bows. It really does. And to make a double bunny ear, you take your loose end. I'm a right-handed person, so I take the loose end in. I keep it all attached to my spool so not a lot gets wasted. And I take this and I wrap around one, two, and then I have about this much here that I use to make a knot, I go, so it was, you cross in the, like on my side of me, go over and then under, and then you make a knot. I did a tip Tuesday back in February of last year. If you guys search on my page for bow maker, it was about 23 minutes, but I went really in depth on making bows and double-sided ribbon and triple bunny ears and double bunny ears. So you really don't waste a lot of ribbon. I do sell the bow makers. I have a friend. Um, he makes them now. I have a different source, you guys. And he was looking for some woodworking opportunity. So I get my bow makers from him. Now they're $7. So if anybody's looking for a bow maker, um, they're a little bit bigger than this one. I have them. You can always add them to your kits, your package kits if you want to. All right, so now that little guy is gonna go at the top. Now, here's a little trick. So when you look at this, if you guys glue this on the top, you can see the line and you can see the line. It doesn't look like you wrapped it and made a bow and made it all pretty. So one way to fix that is you take a glue dot and you put it underneath. I missed it. It's right there. <laughs> so my bow is going to go right out here. So what I'm going to do is take my glue dot and put that down. And now I'm going to squish I don't know if it'll stay like this forever, but it stays like this for a while. <laughs> okay, so you see what I did? I scrunched or scrunched my ribbon to be, look like it was pulled together there on purpose when the bow was made. Like, it, I, like this is a, a trick bow, you guys. I hate wrapping ribbon around. I'm not good at it, so I choose not to do it. <laughs> I'd rather wrap my tails behind or like tuck my tails behind and then put my bow right on the top like this. Push it down good. Now look at my tails though, you guys. <laughs> They're all wonky. So you gotta make sure your bow, <laughs> show your bows who's boss is what I say. So glue dots. <laughs> I try to keep my glue dot nice and flat and I'm gonna pick a spot where I'm gonna put this. And then <laughs> I'm breathing and it's flowing away from me. Now the end of this ribbon is more solid. So you might be successful finding a spot and folding that glue dot in half and then finding the edge of the ribbon for that glue dot to stick in. But I definitely need a glue dot underneath there. Otherwise, if you do it as a circle, you might not see it though either. So just put maybe put the whole circle and then your ribbon will stick into it. But you guys see, now my tails are nice and flat. I, uh, they're, they're, they're nice and orderly, right? <laughs> okay. Then because you didn't have a lot to waste, you're just going to trim your ribbon just a little bit. And I should have done that the other way, but we're going to go this way and then make that one a hair shorter. Okay. And stick it into that glued out really good. <clears throat> just like that. So there's our, and then you can fluff out your little bunny ears. You'll bring them up and so that they're not tucked inside each other. And you just got a cute little bow on the top. Like it's like, this to me looked like a, present a Christmas present that was wrapped and ready to get opened up <laughs> so we're not done we have embellishments okay I got to get that out of my way all right so we have five that we did here so one two 
to buckle my shoe. Okay, the J looks awesome with a little red dot on the top. And then we've got one there and we got one there. Now on this one, we put it over here, but we just, I didn't realize that the J looked really cool with having a little red gem on it, right? So how's that for another card, you guys? It's the designer paper that you can really showcase it. If you have really pretty pattern paper and you want to show it off, this would be a good card to show it off. Especially if the other side's not so cool. <laughs> then you can showcase and highlight the pretty side. Okay, so two down, two to go. Let's, let's clean up a little bit though. So I like to stamp off if I remember to. Most of the time I do, but I always, oh man, Tower of Pisa here. So let's stamp off there. And then we're going to get the chamois out. This one is dirty as well. This one's done. So, washy, washy, washy. All right, so let's get some of the ink off because we are going to use these stamps again for the next two cards. For these two. <laughs> it's like squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Okay. So don't be afraid to pick up your chamois and push into the stamps to get them cleaned out. That helps a lot. I feel like that one is not dirty, but this one is not either. Okay, I think we're back in business. So get that started over. Let's put you away. Did you guys like that card? It's another easy template for a swap card. Just saying. Okay, we're on to this one next. So this one's cool. We had fun with this one. I think we did, <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> All right, same color th scheme, you guys. Evening evergreen and real red. So it was really crazy. I mentioned this in class last night that um, they put a cherry collar and gold ribbon with this suite of products. And it just, to me, didn't look right with it. And Kristen had a hard time too with it. So we, we opted for the real red. So, evening evergreen base, traditional, eight and a half by five and a half, fold and score at four and a quarter. Horizontal card, you guys. So keep it this way. The we mentioned that the DSP. Just saying, I like the card. Yay! I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I amaze Vicky. I love it. <laughs> um, this one, you guys, is three and thir three and thirteen sixteenths by three. Okay, then you have a red mat. Oh, I got two in here accidentally. I got a red mat, which is for our outside. Um, our two white pieces are not the same. Oh, actually they are, but they're not supposed to be. Hang on, I know what I did wrong. I cut the wrong size here. So hang on, I got another one here. We'll grab this really quick. Okay, your inside white mat is the four by five and a quarter and the outside red is four by five and a quarter. Okay, so that'll go inside. Now, this piece is, there's a metal moments embossing folder, I think. And it's a half one. So it's only three inches, right? So it ends here. The main thing is that we wanted to see that extra little bit of depth on the side here to help fill it in. <laughs> so, so that white piece fits on top of your red piece. You have a sacrificial lamb. Oh, I don't know why I have so many of these in here, but I do. Okay, you have a sacrificial lamb, you guys. I call it a sacrificial lamb because this ribbon, if you would put this ribbon like this, you would see through it, and it's a seam. This way, when you put your sacrificial lamb down, it helps to magnify the redness. You have a little label, and then you have two greeneries. This is extra. Uh, you have two greeneries, pear pizzazz and evergreen, and then you have your cherries. So these are dyes. All the dyes came from this one set here. The berries come a set of four. Okay, you guys are going to have to cut off your fourth berry if you so choose. You don't have to cut it off. Poor little guy won't feel a thing, I promise. But you just go, snip, and then he comes off. So you guys have your fourth full berry that you can keep it on. But I love the rule of three with the floral arrangement. So I thought three looked really nice there. Okay. If you want to do four, you guys can. And it did, it did come with four. This label, we have it going horizontal like that versus vertical. But if you like it to go vertical, you definitely can. Okay. So that's a little bit about what's in your kit. 
times four though, right? So you have four of everything. Okay, so let's do some stamping first. Let's put our stamping pants on. And what's our inside look like? Okay, so we're gonna do the Merry Christmas and may this be a Christmas to remember. So this one, this one, and then our foliage in the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna do the real red ink for our sentiments. And let's do this one first. I don't have the piercing mat for now or the foam mat. I already practiced plenty with this guy, so I'm going to go for the kill here. Going straight for it and crossing the fingers <laughs> and it's crooked. <laughs> but wait, you guys, oh my God. Okay, so two things, you could flip it over. If It's okay, it would work, but, oh, I can't, you guys, I use a scrap paper. So I, I don't know why, but I had a second one in there. So I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> And use my second one. So you guys could flip yours over if you wanted to. Let's see if I did better on that one. I did better on that one. I'm happier, happier with that. Okay, so there's that. And then Merry Christmas is right here. So you guys, as you start to use ink, it lightens up. And you can see it's a little bit lighter in the middle, just a little. So what I'll do sometimes is go straight to the edge and go for that ink over there. Okay, nice. Thanks for sharing, Penny. Oh, yes, Jewel, it, it just helps so much having that ghost strip or the sacrificial lamb. I learned about the sacrificial lamb when I had to get a new water heater. So there's this, I, this Kelsey, I don't, there's some stick that they put into the, um, into the water heater so that the calcium will just be drawn to that and eat this stick thing that is in there versus eating the sides of your, um, the insides of your water heater tank. So so, so that's called the sacrificial, they refer to that thing as the sacrificial lamb. So ever since then, I've been calling <laughs> this piece of paper that I put underneath the ribbon, the sacrificial lamb, because it's only serper, like the purpose of it is to serve the ribbon, to make the ribbon look better. <laughs> I do that a lot on sheer ribbons. Okay, so again, just the three guys down on the bottom like that. And I think that's it for stamping um, on mine. You guys would have done all four of them. Okay. So there's that. I got goo on there. Now, let's get a little bit glue happy. See what we can do. So this will get glued onto here, and we can glue our inside in. So let's flip these two over. And we'll put adhesive on the backs of these two. And then, let's see here, this one will go next. Now there was no real pattern to this to me, but part of it does get covered up over here. So if you have more berries here, then put them off to the side. Um, this does cover up top to bottom. So what I do is make sure I'm flush on two sides really nicely. And then you can always flip over the last side and trim anything off. That was, that was a scissors, guys. <laughs> can trim anything off. Hi, Linda Hodge. You missed the beginning part, but in case, um, if you um, want to go back and watch the replay, Linda, you can see how we cut all the designer series paper, um, any kind of tricks I had for that. So that goes on the inside. All right, so now our sacrificial lamb is gonna get glued down. So grab a little liquid glue, put that down in the strip. Now, if you're curious where it goes, it's pretty much, to the edge of the designer paper. If you can see that, it goes here. And so I'm gonna maybe have it covering the designer paper by a hair. Oh, hang on. So I'm centering that. <laughs> I should have glued my red down. Oopsie daisy. So it'll work. So what I'm doing is I have a little overhang, right? So I have a little, I don't know if you guys can see, I have a little overhang. It's okay, because I didn't glue it onto my red. So we'll do that next. Yes, you can catch the replay so it can help you when you're ready. Okay, so this should have gone onto my red piece here. And then that red sacrificial lamb will meet end to end with the red because I cut that at four inches. Okay, so far so good. Now we're gonna do our tear and tape sandwich. So grab yourself two pieces. And look where they need to go. So right about here and here. 
Grab a scissors if you need to trim off any excess overhang. Okay, and we're gonna attach our ribbon now onto the front of this. So cut yourself about a half inch pass so that you can look at it from the front and just flip those tails over and then attach. A couple more pieces right on the back. And then you guys know what's next. We're gonna adhere this to the front of our card base. Make sure you got to go in the right direction. Eighth of an inch around for a nice mat. Now, well, how do we do the front part? So I always like to attach things to my, the back of my label and then put my label on. And I kind of play with it until I get it how I want it. I don't generally like to glue these things and guess where they go and then my label doesn't look good. So. How do I do that? Tear and tape. You guys, I love the tear and tape. Opposite corners, just kind of like what we did with that ribbon. So put two pieces on opposite corners where those leaves are coming out. And now what you can do, this guy kind of hangs over the top like that to give it a little bit of depth, right? So like that. And then the bottom one comes out along the same lines like that and they're gonna attach to that tear and tape. Cool? Now though, what I would do, I would like to dimensionalize everything. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna even do my leaves here. So I got my baby dimensionals here. They fit really nicely in the little leaf sections here. Get in there and then I'm gonna make sure I put over the top of that tear and tape because I don't want that sticking to the paper below and wanting to go flat on that. So do lots of dimensionals like this. I might do even one more right there. Okay, you guys doing okay so far? So good? <laughs> I didn't lose anybody yet, did I? <laughs> good. Pop this up. I, the one thing I didn't do is test it to make sure it works, but I know it will because I got it set up the exact same way here. And now I've got this. You can't go too far over because you don't want to go off the edge. So it's not quite centered. It's actually like I've got it coming out this, the edge there. And just going to go with something like that. And then the back of these, I'm going to put, I don't know, I guess three. Because these little dimensionals, they fit so nicely <laughs> in the back. I'm just going to go three. It's overkill, but three it is. And then these guys go right here. Boom. All right, not done. Gems. So you guys have a whole bunch of gems. You might as well use them. Go crazy. Put lots on. All right, we're going to do a couple here on the bottom area. And then I got one up here. Now, I have a hard time with five. I don't generally know how to do five. <laughs> so I leave it at three. But Stella had been on a break this whole time. So she needs to get off of her butt and come out and do some work. So we're gonna Stella our leaves here. This set and then this set. You guys, did you know you can Stella ribbon? Yep, you can. It, it works good on ribbon. My Stella pen has been rehydrated a few times. There's a Tip Tuesday on how to rehydrate Stella. Like it's called Stella CPR. Um, you can rehydrate her by adding rubbing alcohol and rejuvenating her. Um, on these last two cards, you guys, let's see here. Okay, I like to, if there's not a good spot to go with Stella, you could always just do the outlines until you have a Stella pen and really can see it up close and in person, you then you can see the bedazzly part. But in the video, you guys can hardly see it. So, but we gotta, we, we always forget about her on the first one, but then we remember by the third one. So, but she needs some Stella CPR bad. <laughs> She's a little, a little bit getting like dried up. So three done, you guys, I should have showed you that one. All right, so this is what we got. That guy's done, that one's done. 
That one's done. Oh man, Stella is a girl's best friend. It's called Winka Stella. It is a glitter brush, but it's good. It's controlled glitter. So it doesn't like brush off and get all over your face and in your eyes and on your <laughs> teeth. <laughs> like, you know, glitter can get everywhere, but Stella is controlled. And I don't know if you guys, it's so hard to see it in the camera. I try to, but the camera just doesn't show it unless it's super, super duper Stella. But the leaves are Stella'd here. So when you guys have gotten cards from me that you've won cards, and they're Stella'd, you can see that, right? You know, like, then you can see it up close and personal. And if you have a Stella pen, you can see it as well. Okay, thanks, Linda. All right, we're on to the last. They say last, but not least. Okay, so this is our strippy, scrappy card. <laughs> this one's Carissa. She came up with this idea. She's like, people need to know how to use scraps. And I'm like, oh, okay. I think she said that. <laughs> or maybe I made that up in my head. <laughs> But I couldn't picture myself doing this and cutting 72 of each of these for a class. That would have been beyond crazy. <laughs> um, glitter makes you crazy. Yes, but this one wouldn't make you crazy because it's controlled. <laughs> um, and you really, we sell, Stampin' Up! sells clear ones. But you can get them with every color under the sun, you guys. But honestly, all you need is clear. Clear covers over any color you have. Um, I got a gold one once through Stampin' Up! And I hated it. Like, it looked... Like, the only time you could ever use it was on Santa's belt buckle or on gold stars. It wasn't good. So, gold, I didn't like at all. Clear it is for me. Okay, you guys. Four cards for this one as well. That would complete your stamp a stack. So, oh, what do we have here? This one. Did you like it, you guys? We had green base, green base, red base, red base. <laughs> like, it's green eggs and ham. So, eight and a half by five and a half. You will learn with me. I love a traditional A2 card. <laughs> oh, I do my other fun folds and I do other things, but I love the A2. Oh, and it's horizontal. Can't forget that. Okay. So there are two white mats in here. You guys, they are not the same size. The one that's on the bottom and larger is definitely for your inside. And the way that you know that the white one for your outside is because your green mat fits on it perfectly like this. If you try to figure it on this one, you're gonna be like, okay, nope, it's too big. So you guys can always answer that question yourself if you're confused about which white mat is white mat. <laughs> Sandy agrees that Stella is the best thing ever. See, we got a second, yay. Okay, so that'll go here. And now you guys, we had a red label. Oh, that's where that white, okay, I did put it in the wrong kit. So that was supposed to go, and now I have an extra one here. Wow, okay, so. That's extra, but we have the right labels. You guys, a red one, and that one's now going to be off to the bottom right versus centered. We, so I don't know if you noticed it, but we tried to do all the labels different. That one's cut and split diagonally. That one's on the bottom. That one has no label background, and then this one is to the right, just to show you different varieties. Okay, so you should also have another sacrificial lamb, three-eighths of an inch strip of red for this card kit. Can Wink of Stella dry out? Yes, I believe so, Audrey. Um, if you don't use it for a very, very, very long time. And actually, Chris Dudarenki had one that she just started the other night, and she couldn't get it to, um, you could, she couldn't get any Stella to come out of the, the, that black area there. It wouldn't come into the chamber. So she was going to take a pin and try to poke in there to see if the Stella was globbed up and like goopy. And if, that was the case, then all she was going to do was call Stampin' Up! And they stand 100% behind their products, and they would send her a new one. So, But yes, I feel like it can get dried out. It's a solution in here, and I would have to just like think anything can dry out over time. But Sandy just said you can rejuvenate Stella. We were talking about rejuvenating Stella. Um, I'll take just a second and show you guys. If you have your pokey tool, what you do, and I have a tip Tuesday. I think Kelly did it. You poke on the side here and what happens is this comes out i'm not going to spill it i promise but you can see all that goldy stuff that's glitter huh <laughs> lots of it so it smells like rubbing alcohol because i added rubbing out so you take this out and you pour rubbing alcohol in here um i don't know if you guys can see in there oh yeah you can see how dark it is in there that's glitter right at the bottom mixed with rubbing alcohol and as it gets empty and dried out 
you would add more. And then there's a lot of glitter in there. You couldn't give Stella CPR probably three or four times until finally all the glitter is actually out of your Stella pen. <laughs> then you might just throw it away and get a new one. <laughs> they make new ones every day. So, but yes, um, the trick too with Stella is there's these two things that say push and push. So they're words, <laughs> two words, not things. And you push them. Um, I never do it over the top of paper, but I squeeze. Oh, shoot. See, that's why. I don't, did you guys see what happened there? Okay. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hang on. <laughs> I squeeze over the top of my hand because that's really easy to wash. Um, I highly recommend squeezing it over like an, um, a block. And then also a silicone mat works really well. Okay, so, um, so you squeeze it like that. And then now you can see how it's, it looks wet, but it's also shimmery. Okay, so yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> you have to be very careful. We talked about this in class on Wednesday night that Vanessa accidentally squeezed too much and Stella had a blowout. And it just make sure you don't do it. Do you see how I moved everything away? <laughs> you don't do it over your project. Okay, let's not play with her right now anymore. <laughs> so we'll come back to that when the time comes. All right, Stella <laughs> made an appearance. Good. All right, and now I finally threw away that wet wipe. Good job. All right, so let's work on this card. How do you guys want to put this together? That's what you want to know, right? Okay, so you have this half inch strip here. Now, depending on what you picked, you may want to go back to the drawing board. So that one had a lot of pine cones on it. This one has this right in the middle, this little bit of decoration. That can work. So we're going to go with that one anyways. And you got to be careful with this because you don't want to put glue on the whole back of it. So I would actually put glue right there. Now, you're gonna put this on at an angle, just like that, okay? Sadly, that little bit's gonna get cut off. You guys, depending on how long you cut your scraps, you're gonna end up cutting all those edges off at the end. Okay, so that one goes there. I'm not gluing the backs of my designer paper because I do not wanna risk getting glue everywhere. So I'm going to make sure I leave a little margin and kind of put glue like that. This next strip was the one inch one. So that's gonna go, make sure you guys are at a little bit of an angle. And you have about a 16th inch gap in the middle. You gotta give that glue a second to bond with the paper. Otherwise it'll keep wiggling on you, okay? Now time for our sacrificial lamb right here, okay? So I'm just gonna run A little bit of glue where I think it's going to go, right? <laughs> Guess as good as mine. And that'll go next. Like that. Have you guys made a card like this before? <laughs> I'm curious. Or put your silicone mat under the card. Yes, Anna, you got it right. Perfect. Okay, this guy goes here. This is the little 3 8 inch one, so you got to be very careful with this. Um, I cut a really long piece, apparently, so that's okay. That's going to go next. You guys, this really uses up the scraps nicely. Okay, so there's that one. Now, this one is about a three-quarter inch, so that'll go next right here. Leave that little gap like that. And then you've got the pine cone one is a half inch, so you don't want to use a lot of glue. And the main thing was that you need to make sure your scraps are long enough. I got really close on the end here. It's almost, and like over there, it's almost too short. If I would have had it um, like a quarter inch shorter, it would have been too short. Okay, so there we go. So mine ended right at the corner there. I got really close. You can see I'm almost at the corner. But that works. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Make sure all that is really nice and dry. And then what you're going to do. <clears throat> oh, it's going to be your least favorite. So save this one to, for last or get it out of the way first. I guess that's what I would say. So now you got this back. So what I do is instead of trying to cut it from this way, I flip it over and I use the green as a guide. So snip, snip, snip. Snip, snip off. <laughs> okay, guys, I like to make sound effects. Okay, I do that in person too. <laughs> All right, and cut these guys. 
That's it. <clears throat> it's not rocket science. Wait, US Dollar say it's not complicated. Garbage, garbage, garbage. This stuff, you do not need to save that unless you're a very purposeful wanting to use this for something else kind of a project. I don't have <laughs> the mindset to work with that. Okay, so this guy though, we need our ribbon on here, right? Tear and tape sandwich. So flip it over, figure out where your tear and tape's gonna need to go and cut yourself a piece of ribbon or four <laughs> to be exact at the right length. Okay. Take off the tear and tape. Now this is important. You need to make sure that it's secured so good behind here because of being at an angle is what I figured out. So this one, you know, look at it from the front and fold it over. And now I missed my tear and tape by a lot. So I don't even have tear and tape over here. So I'm going to make sure to pickle that good when I put my second tear and tape over it. But when you bring it this way, I, I'm going to hold it with my thumb and make sure I get it on there really good. And then I caught that one. But now I've got this little ribbon hanging over. That's okay. Just take your scissors and snap it off. And, okay. So you want to make sure that's nice and snug. Then grab more tear and tape. And we're going to make sure that that is nice and secure. And I'm going to go up with it. And then I'm going to go up with it again, just to make sure that little guy does not want to come off. And I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to pop this up actually with dimensionals. So I'm not going to use um, the tear and tape as double-sided tape. I'm going to use it as single-sided tape. All right. And then we're going to pop it up and we're going to go for some black dimensionals because it's the evergreen is almost black. It's so dark. So we're going to use the black dimensionals. They'll be hidden nicely behind. And then I'll pop this layer up. And I think we need one there. <laughs> need one there. <laughs> Good measure, right? Okay. So, oh, you guys, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Either way, whatever. <laughs> it's going to work. I really wanted to glue the green down flat and pop the white up, but this will work too. So I really meant to glue that flat. It's all good. It's going to work, you guys. So <laughs> you just got to be really careful putting this on here. So let's think. It's going to go something like this has got to, I'm getting the top and the bottom and the left aligned and hoping that ooh, it's got to go further this way. So had I used um, liquid glue, this would be a little bit easier. And then the red would have just gotten popped up. But I think we're going to go with this, like right there. If you have the top and bottom straight, the sides should come out straight. So that's now popped up, which is okay. Now, now I'm not going to pop up again. I'm going to glue the white flat. So it's okay. It looks um, like you probably can't even see the difference. <laughs> but I would have uh, rather glued that other one flat so that my ribbon tails would have been nice and snug underneath there, but this is good too. So now the white is flat. Yep, good job. Okay, so get that center nice on the front of your card. All right, now we gotta do our stamping. So we've got love and joy come to you and may it last the whole year through. And then what's our inside look like? Oh, that guy. I'm not going to do that guy. I'm going to do this guy instead. He looks nice. And he matches those leaves nicely. So we're going to do that. And then what do we stamp on the inside? Season's greetings. So we'll do that. And this one here. It's like, did you guys see me pause for a minute? I'm like, where's my stamp? It's right here. <laughs> does that happen to you at home? <laughs> Tell me it does because it happens to me all the time. I'm looking for something and it's literally right in front of my face. Okay. Half the time though, it is covered up by something that I just put on top of it. So that happens. <laughs> All right. Let's put this guy here. Thanks, Robin. Hi, Stacy Burns. Newest B on the Be Happy Stampers team. It didn't take you long to sign up, girlfriend. Holy Moses. By the time I got done with the live yesterday, I saw the email in my inbox that Stacy Burns signed up. So congratulations on being now the most recent newbie, right behind Tabitha. Congratulations. And right behind Joyce. So nine newbies on the team since November 
second. So excited. So welcome, Stacy. I invited you to the team stuff as I did Tabitha and anybody else that, oh my gosh, I, I need to get you guys welcome though. So I'm <laughs> working on that. So we really let this marinate for a long time because I was so excited, you guys. So there's that. <laughs> okay, but we're not done with the green and we have our inside. Oh yeah, that guy. So we're gonna grab the piercing mat and our inside and a scratch piece for there and it's this guy. So ink that up. So Stacy took advantage of the promotion that's going on right now. This is super dark. So I might stamp off just to see what second strength looks like. And I'm good with that. You guys, I re-inked that ink pad and it got super dark. And you're probably wondering about that. You're like, is that an issue with the stamp? Like, why does it look like that? It actually, if you go back to the, its source, which is the picture on the case, you can see it's lighter there, lighter there, lighter. So that is how the stamp is supposed to look. It's kind of got a water color -y look to it, like a watercolor wash. So yes. So yeah, so Stacy took advantage of the sign-up promotion that's going on right now, which is the best deal in the entire catalog right now. She's got $125 worth of product for $75, and she has a 20% discount up through basically... She's good through April 30th, I think. So, is that clean? All right, let's get this out of here. And she's part of the bees. Yay. Season's greetings. Good deal. Okay, so let's close this. We're almost to the end of it. Oh, man. Okay, so we're going to put this guy. I'm going to put the glue on the, the label here so I don't put too much behind the white it's going to be hanging up a little bit. Okay, so let's finagle this. Something like that. I'm trying to get rid of the red over here and the red over there. And I might just take, there's like a little red peeking over there. So I'm going to just snip that off. Then you can't see it. Because I don't mind that hump hump there and that hump there, but <laughs> I didn't want that little weird one there. Okay. So pop that up with some dimensionals and we got more white ones here. So this was like from a paper pumpkin. So we're going to almost use this up here. So we're gonna go like that, put this here, that there. Oh, I love using up pieces of paper or like dimensionals, but not quite. We'll get that one the next time. Okay, peel those off. And put your label in the corner here. I'm going to go up a hair higher than I did here so I have a little bit more room for my bozy. And go there. Inside can get glued in, so grab some adhesive for that. Whatever you like to use is perfectly fine. I am a fan of the liquid glue. That goes there. And now you guys, we get to make a bow again. Okay, so grab a bow maker if you're not, if you have one. Otherwise, you're going to have to use your fingers. <laughs> All right, so we'll grab what, figure out what size you want. I think I'm going to go with that one. And this one's a single bow, so I'm just going to wrap it around here once. I feel like that's too little. So my nail holes have gotten worn. So my nails come together at the top. So I actually get two sizes. I get a bottom size and a top size. So I'm going to go with a little bit bigger hole gap but towards the top, which makes it just a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna try to pull my tails to the bottom down and right. Oh, Julie, you gotta bring your bow maker tomorrow. Stacy Burn, uh, Stacy Burns, I'm um, Stacy Warner. If you're still watching, um, I should have put that in the email to you guys. You gotta bring your bow makers. I will have my bow maker there tomorrow. So that's another thing that's not normal, you guys. When you take a card class with me that is not product based, where you get my kits, I make all your bows for you. <laughs> so when you, I always put a piece of tape down. I fold the end to make a little tab so it's easy to pull off like that, you guys. That's another little trick. Okay, so not cheese, but queso. All right, glue dot is what you need for this one. And that's gonna go right, oh, Stacy, you don't have a bow maker. So Stacy, you can use mine. 
I have mine that's on my desk here and I have mine that's in my toolbox. So you're welcome to use mine to make bows. Um, Gail always carries hers. I should tell Barb. So there's a front and the back. I think I'm gonna do that for the back. Okay. So Jeannie Parker's asking, what is considered an A2 size card? This is an A2 size card. A2 is four and a quarter by five and a half. Like an A7 is an invitation size, like a five by seven. Um, a note card is, I think, an A something. <laughs> if you guys Google um, A2 card size, it comes up with a chart and there's like A1 through A7 and each one has a different size. A2 is your traditional A2 card. It's like what I always make is A2. And not always, I should say what I most of the time make. So that's gonna go like that. And then this one's gonna go like that. Now, he did okay with his tails somewhat. So, but we're still gonna help him out. And we're gonna <laughs> tack his tails down here. Oop, didn't wanna go. So I'm gonna put that little glue dot right on my green. You don't generally see it through. No one will know to look for it, but I mean, I can see that it's there. This one is in good condition. He's going exactly where I want, so I'm not gonna make him go where I want. So he's good. Um, so we're, not, oh, we need this yet. Gems, so you guys have a whole pack of gems. Make lots more of these beautiful cards. You have more paper left over. You can throw in some different mats and different bases and make some pretty cards. We're gonna put one there and then a couple over here, so. Now, I did only do one set of each of my cards, right? So now though, when you're all done with all four, you guys will have used a good portion of your gems, so that's nice. All right, so how was it? Did you like the scrappy one? I know, Julie, you said that you like this one the least or you're gonna enjoy putting it together the least, I think is what you said. So hopefully after seeing it, you don't think it's too crazy. Oh, I gotta get my scissors in the right hole. There we go. Okay, so there's a close up of that one. So another one that if you've got lots of these ends of your scrap designer paper, as long as they work together, you could glue them on the side and make a pretty little scrappy card. <laughs> so, all right, let's recap. We did this one first, our present, well, I call it the present one, second. All right, then we've got this one and this one. Aren't they awesome? I don't know, could you pick just a certain one? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, like, I love the different layouts on all of them. They're, they're just easy classic layouts that I think that are very easily duplicatable and reproducible and not so crazy hard. So Lori loves them all. Cindy says they're all pretty. So that's awesome. I'm glad you guys like these. Thank you to Carissa for helping with the design process. Stacy liked the last one. Good, good. Um, Jeannie likes them all. So thanks to Carissa for helping with the design process and Anna and Pat and Karen and my mom for all helping to get these out into your hands. It was awesome. So I couldn't do what I love to do without all my helpers. So, oh, yay. So those are those four. So, yay. You guys are like, I'm watching all your comments come in. <laughs> so that's good. Yes, and you learned a few things, Laura. I'm happy to hear that. You guys, I have a bow maker if you need one. <laughs> so you just got to email me, you guys. My email was down the entire time. Emailing and texting are the easiest ways to get a hold of me. Um, if you're looking for a bow maker, Laura, all you got to do is send me an email. They are $7 plus shipping. Shipping is like four or five bucks, depending on where in the United States it's going to. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. Hi, Mary Hornke. Um, they're also pretty. Yay. There's Vicki Edmondson. Yay. So I'm seeing all you guys sometimes come in now. Barb's there as well. And then that, cool. I know some of you guys were in earlier, but sometimes if you don't comment or if um, you just share it, I don't always see that you're live with me. So I like to see the names and then I know who's with me. So that's awesome. And sometimes, I was mentioning this yesterday, sometimes Facebook doesn't show me the comments come through all the way. So I, I don't always get to say hi. So just know I always say hi in my head. <laughs> you might not hear it, but um, so we all, we're gonna do a door prize. I gotta find my class sign up sheet. And we will do a door prize for somebody that got, no Audrey, 
Margaret got the last one. I had two extra ones going in because I had um, some cancellations early on that I after I had planned for everybody. And so I had two. Bobby got one and Margaret got the other. So, But the PDF, I was telling people earlier on, the PDF tutorial will be $10 or a free with a minimum order. So if you want to purchase $20 for my online store using my current host code, you could get the tutorial for free and you guys could buy anything. I mean, you could even buy some of these supplies yourself. Uh, so the PDF tutorial will be available. I don't know what time is it? It's 7.30. I might try to get it done tonight. I don't think there's any reason why I can't, but if it's not tonight, I'll try to do it tomorrow. And so you could always get the PDF tutorial for the four cards. Um, it has pictures, measurements. It's got a link to the YouTube and... Um, this Facebook video and instructions on how I put them together. And then you have access to this video all the time that you could come back to it. So is my email typed somewhere? That is a good question. Look at this. It's typed right here. <laughs> also, I'm sure somebody in the comments could potentially type that and um, type it in. Um, I have awesome community of helpers and people watching me. Um, I bet somebody would be so kind and type that into there for Laura as well. Then you can just copy and paste it. Um, it's everywhere. <laughs> I think it is. So hi, Sue Sorrell. Okay, so we had, oh, let's see here. So we had um, Margaret was number 24. So, well, I had 24 between in-person and online. So Bobby, you made number 15 online. And then Margaret, you're number 16. And then I had the other eight people are for in-person tomorrow. So I get to make these cards with people um, alive in the hive tomorrow. <laughs> Laura, it's okay. <laughs> You know, you were so intent on watching the designing or the, the card um, stamping, prepping, and assembly that I that you never saw that up in the corner. Thanks, Ann Bellinger, for typing in there. So, so Laura, you could either just copy and paste it. Thanks, Carissa. You guys are awesome. I have awesome people that watch me, so you guys are always so amazing and helpful when people need questions asked. Hi, Tommy Elliott, watching from Fort Worth, Texas. So, so we're going to do a drawing, and we're going to do it for all 24 people. So if somebody's here in person and you guys get your name called, then you'll get your prize tomorrow. And then how I do it is if you're not local to me, I save your prize and put it in with the next package that you get from me. So I hang on to your prize until you get another set of card kits from me. So without further ado, um, how am I going to do this? So I have 1 through 16 for tonight, and then we are going to do... Um, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. That doesn't make sense. Oh, you know what? I have Anna Zastro took advantage of the team pricing, and that's why Anna's the only one. Anna um, is on the Be Happy Stampers, and I gave Anna team price. Like I, I gave people on my team the option to buy their own four sets of products and then they could buy the kits from me so she so I'm not going to include Anna because I'm going to do everybody that purchased product the actual kits from me because they bought product and that's what I use to get prizes so so we're going to keep it to the 24 all right so that means that we are going to make Stacy number 20 okay I got it now I figured it out like that was a little bit like whew, what happened here but I got it okay so we'll flip down oh and then we got to do mystery night you guys so Let's go here to Paper Pumpkin um, and get out of Paper Pumpkin and go to random, random number generator. Oh, you guys. Okay, so we had 24 people. And so when I click the word generate, it'll tell me a number. 23. Mary Scott, you are number 23. So I don't know if you're watching me now, but you are going to be here tomorrow. So congratulations to Mary Scott. You are the lucky winner. I should write that down. I'll have a prize for you tomorrow when you come to class. So wonderful news. Okay, so I got to write door prize. You will be excited to see that or hear that or <laughs> realize that. Okay, so now we're going to do mystery card night. Are you guys excited? So let's flip down. You guys saw the card that we made that was already shared. And so what Kelly did is she sent me an email. So we're going to have to, oops. We have to um, look at my email really quick. So, do, 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 do. it is right here, Kelly Lamb. So, Kelly sent me a list of everybody who shared. So, starting with one, 
and going all the way to number 47. So we'll do two winners. So we'll go back to random number generator. I forgot how many I said, you guys. <laughs> 47. I thought that's what it was, but I didn't want to miss somebody. So we're going to put in here 47. And when I click the word generate, we're going to see what number is picked, okay? Da -da -da! You guys, drum roll. Brr, brr, brr. <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. All right, number five. Okay, number five is number five, Karen Goddard. Woohoo! Karen, you, I believe, are my Aussie buddies. So we'll find a flat prize. I always say that if you're international, you pay for postage. But what we do is we make a deal. I will find a pack of embellishments that will fit into a regular um, envelope. And I already have an international stamp for you. <laughs> I figured it would happen again. So we're going to hit generate again. Number 24 is our lucky, lucky winner, winner, chicken dinner. Deb Norman, you are number, I don't know if you guys can see, but Deb is number 24. Woohoo, Deb, you were picked for um, mystery night. So Deb Norman, Awesome sauce. And so, Deb, you have a box coming next week because you have your Be Happy Stampers shirt from On Stage coming. And you have a game night coming, and Susie's game night's going in there. So, I will put a prize in there for you for game night. So, how does that sound? Woohoo. Okay. Now, I know Carissa's watching. Did I forget anything? <laughs> she usually helps me remember everything that I forget. <laughs> She's got my back. So, we did the game night. No, we did not. We did mystery night. Oh, so that does remind me about game night, you guys. I think I might have about seven spots left for game night. All the cards are kitted, ready to go. Game night is right after Thanksgiving break. It's the Thursday after. So you guys, I don't know if you realize this, but we're not going to be live next Thursday. It's turkey dinner day. Uh, so my live for next week is actually on Monday. It is, hi, Leslie McMinn. Um, my live is on Monday night, and it's ink, paper, scissors featuring the gingerbread um, suite of products, kind of. So, you guys, this is what we're going to be doing on Monday night. So, you guys get me again right away in a few days. So, <laughs> yay. So, you guys, I have a bunch of kits left for this class yet. Um, oh, Jewel. You know, I Jewel, I had you already factored into it. So, you're already in the list. Um, I So, Carissa said I have everything. Are the game night cards the snowmen? Yes, game night is snowmen. This is going to be next Monday. So this is ink, paper, scissors with the gingerbread, you guys. I know that once I start making the cards on Monday night, I think you're going to love them and maybe you'll sign up. <laughs> so help me, my mom would say, pedal off some of those kits. Um, so, so I'm going to do a swap card showcase probably right after this video. And then um, in-person class tomorrow, back on Monday for ink, paper, scissors. We're off then Thursday. So what I think I'll do on Thursday is I'll schedule a replay of a past class, maybe the poinsettia from last year, since that's still a current set. How does that sound? I think that'll be a nice Christmas um, uh, replay. So we'll have a replay on Thursday. And then the following week on Thursday is game night. And it is Stacy the Snowman. So I do have between five and 10 left, maybe seven, six. And I know, Jewel, you were already included in the list from last night. So um, as soon as you guys tell me you want to do a class, I put you on my list. And then I always figure out the payment with you afterwards or if you're going to put an order. So it's just a matter of getting you on my class list that this is the most important thing. So um, yeah, so that's a little lineup for what's coming up. Um, if you, Tip Tuesdays will be, you, I, you guys, watch for Tip Tuesday. I've had enough people ask me about the gold leafing and so uh, the Tip Tuesday for, um, for next week is going to be the gold leafing. Uh, so Tammy Sokolik was the final straw, I guess you could say. She's like, you should do it, Tip Tuesday on it. She said it this morning. I'm like, yep, okay, let's do a Tip Tuesday. Because I keep referring people back to, um, to a video I did with the Art Floral back in February. And then you got to watch the whole thing. So, uh, so Stacy. Game night is $41 cash option mailed, okay? Game night is. Ink, paper, scissors mailed is 30. So the gingerbread is 30 mailed for the cash option. Game night is 41. And so I will do on Tip Tuesday for this coming Tuesday, the gold leafing. Um, it will probably be filmed ahead of time so that it'll be aired sometime during the day. And I'll show you the different ways you can adhere the gold leafing to your cards or to how to use it and work with it because it can be really messy and annoying. And you probably think, why did I spend $9 buying this pot of gold? <laughs> that doesn't feel like gold to me. It feels like... <laughs> 
garbage. I don't know, whatever you think it might be. So, um, Anita's asking if you sign up to only get the discount, do you have to report income and taxes for April tax return? You know, I don't want to get into any um, thing like with tax and law like that. I know that if you don't actively work your business as a business and you don't make any income and you're not running it, and you're a discount shopper, you don't, from what I understand, you don't need to. So I did nothing with my Stampin' Up! business. I signed up and I did nothing for two or three years and I didn't report anything. Now, you may find advice somebody else, but I would have to say you're generally safe that if you're not running your Stampin' Up! business as a business and you're a discount shopper happily buying stuff for yourself, that you're not running a business. So there's no need to do that. So, uh, but it is always good and um, advisable to seek the legal advice of your counsel, <laughs> right? Because I don't want to get you in trouble for doing anything that you should have been doing. So I hope that answers your question. So yes, but Anita, I have a lot of people, I would have to say with the 70 people that sign up on my team, there's only a couple people that are even doing fun classes and not even really working the business. And they're all discount shoppers and they love getting that 20% or 25% discount. And so the other thing that's awesome about joining my team is if you guys really like my style and my cards, I have every PDF tutorial that I've ever made. Uh, I should say that, yeah, I think it goes back about two and a half years now. Um, and they're all housed in my Facebook group. So once you are a, a B and invited to my team page or my team group, uh, you guys can go through all of them and download them and you have access to all of them without having to buy them. So another little perk if you like my style of cards. So um, if you, oh, Jewel said here, if you make less than $600, you don't have to report it. Boom. Yes. Thank you for that answer, Jewel. I will make sure to remember that. I just didn't want to tell anybody wrong. I'm not a tax accountant or an attorney or a lawyer by any means. I love stamping and <laughs> I don't want to lead anybody astray. So yeah. So Jewel said it. Jewel said that if it's you make less than $600, you don't have to report it. So there you go. So just don't make less, don't make more than $600 and you should be golden. So I would love for you, Anita, to join my team of Be Happy Stampers. So that's it. I think we're good. Chris has told me that I didn't forget anything. So I, <laughs> if I did, I'll bring it up the next time, which is in a little bit. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Well, I'm going to end this video saying sunshine, love, and hugs and happiness to all of you. And if you catch me in a little bit doing a swap card showcase, then I will see you soon. <laughs> all right. Until I see you again, love and hugs. Bye, guys.